Welcome back to Hudson Valley Week in Review. I'm Amy Green. We continue tonight in New Paltz, where protesters took to the streets this week to speak out against the proposed Pilgrim Pipeline. The project is designed to transport crude oil and refined gas and diesel between a 178 mile stretch along the New York Thruway between Albany and Linden, New Jersey. The New Paltz Climate Action Coalition and Protecting Our Waters organizations say the pipeline should not be allowed to be constructed along the Thruway corridor. Both the Rosendale and Ulster Town boards have already passed resolutions opposing the project, citing concerns that the Bakken crude poses a real threat to local residents and the environment if an accident were to occur along the route. Board members also say that emergency crews would be ill-equipped to handle incidents involving ruptures or explosions. Now, one of the protesters at the demonstration was Miriam Strauss, co-chair of the New Pulse Climate Action Coalition. Here's her take on the Pilgrim Pipeline plan. <music> Over two dozen communities in Jersey and already Rosendale and New Paltz have come out voicing their concern, opposing the construction of this pipeline because they're concerned about not, they're not even really focused as local entities. They're not even that concerned with the broader environmental aspects of this pipeline. They're concerned with the fact that it would be carrying Bakken oil, the oil from the Bakken shale, which is highly flammable, highly volatile. Some of the uh, some of the fractions of it are very potentially dangerous if there's any mishap with the pipeline. And that's a very core concern with the safety of this pipeline. So to some extent, it's a NIMBY issue. There are larger issues, but that's very much the local concern is with the safety. And the throughway has been considered our understanding. We're not sure of this. We're trying to get verification from the Thruway folks, the Thruway Authority, whether or not they've approached the Thruway. We don't know whether or not Pilgrim Pipeline has approached the Thruway Authority to gain access to the Thruway as a way to bring this pipeline up through the Hudson Valley. We, what we definitely know is that the representatives for the pipeline have approached homeowners in Platykill, in Rosendale, and New Paltz and asked to come onto their lands to survey the lands for a possible route. And that they've been, a, their tactics have been kind of high-handed. They've implied that they have a right to do this when they don't. They're a private corporation, they have no right of eminent domain, and it sort of comes across as a, my lawyers are gonna beat up your lawyers kind of scenario where people have felt, specifically people have voiced that they have felt intimidated into signing. So that's one of our concerns. But our concern today, the reason we're near the Thruway, is because we want to make sure that the Thruway Authority hears our concerns loud and clear about this pipeline coming up. I think they share the concerns about our increasing dependence on fossil fuels and the, the fantasy or the illusion that building out more fossil fuel infrastructure is the way to energy security and a sustainable energy future. The future I envision involves less reliance on fossil fuels. It does not involve mining the last fossil fuels with the most energy efficient, the most environmentally harmful extraction methods in order to use these fuels and warm up the planet. It's, it's a bad combination, changing the climate, damaging the environment. It's a bad way to go when recent studies have come out that say that solar and other renewables are coming down to a place where they are where they're economically feasible and that's the direction i'd like to see us going i can't a handful of construction jobs and a, a lot of uh, probably if it were to be built and i desperately hope or definitely hope that it is not built. Let's see, there would be jobs in public safety. There probably would be jobs in security. There might be jobs in maintenance and inspection, but I don't think there'd be very many jobs in inspection because generally those are the kind of position, those are the kind of jobs that have been cut back. If you, I don't know if you're familiar with the Bakken Shale and it's, it comes from North Dakota and there was a series in the paper in the New York Times, I think the 23rd and that was a two part series about the, I won't say lax, but just the very small regulatory apparatus there and the consequences in this rural place of having this industrial infrastructure built out for, uh, so that they can extract the oil. The, the oil comes from 
it's a shale oil. Mm -hmm. It's sort of similar to fracking for gas. You can also frack for oil in oil formations, and that's the technique they're using out there with some of the same consequences for air and water quality. Making sure that the Thruway Authority hears what we're saying, meeting up and organizing with other people up and down the Hudson Valley. Other groups, there are actually new groups starting. And There's a new group in Newburgh that is actually planning to come up tonight. They, as I, Again, they may have changed their mind because of the weather, but they're brand new. It's a group, Citizens Oppose Dirty Energy. Brand new group, never heard of them until last week. Now they exist, and they're concerned with some of the same issues. And I imagine other communities up and down the valley will be showing their concern by passing resolutions similar to the ones that Rosendale and New Paltz have passed. Also in Ulster County, nearly three dozen people have been sworn in as American citizens. This week, 32 people took the oath of allegiance during a naturalization ceremony at the historic Ulster County Courthouse in Kingston. Surrounded by family members and friends, the new citizens accepted the responsibilities of an American while also gaining the rights and privileges afforded to most Americans by birth. Program participants included Congressman Chris Gibson, Ulster County Sheriff Paul Van Blarkham, and the Ulster Literacy Association with Judge Karen. Aaron K. Peters presiding over the ceremony. County Clerk Nina Poshupak awarded the citizens with certificates. Uh, Roxanna Marisol Monterosa. Rashis Krishnatas Shinoy. Congratulations. Photo up. Where'd the photo go? Congratulations. Kavita Rajash Shinoy. Congratulations. Carla Elizabeth Soto. <laughs> Following the ceremony, we spoke with participants and newly sworn in citizens about the occasion. This is a very special day for us here in Ulster County because it's a day that individuals choose to become American citizens and we have the whole community involved and it's just such a special event for family, friends, elected officials, community leaders. So um, it's a joyous occasion. We worked very hard to bring these ceremonies back to Ulster County because for many years, from 1992 to 2005, these ceremonies were only held down in New York City. And it's a nice time where the families can participate, friends can be involved, the community can say thank you, welcome as an American citizen. And it just makes it that much more special. So we feel very lucky that we're able to do this four times a year here in Ulster County. I think, you know, it's a lengthy process and it's not an easy process and they've really, um, many of them for years have gone through the paperwork and the um, procedures. So this day is really a culmination of all of that hard work and following the rules and regulations and it's special for them because they chose it and uh, it's just a wonderful event. For them now it's given back to the community, I think. You know, they have the ability to vote, they have the ability to sit on a jury, they have the ability to be part of our American system, and they have been in the past, but now as a citizen of the United States. Um, well, I've been a tutor with uh, Ulster Literacy Association for four years now, and I've been working uh, with uh, Maribel Mia that whole time, and I helped her prepare for the test, and uh, today she got her citizenship. 
I'm so proud of her. Uh, she's come a, a long way in the four years that we've been working together. And I know this has been a goal of hers for a really long time, so it's a proud moment. Maribel, I know, was really committed to becoming a citizen. It's something that she's talked about for a long time, and I'm sure it makes her feel um, like she really belongs here now that she's finally achieved this. Um, well, I hope to I hope to work with other students in the future. I really love um, you know working with ESL students, um, and hopefully I'll be able to help somebody else achieve this goal soon also. Uh, great, it's been a long journey. I'm an American citizen. Uh, I came here when I was eight years old, so now I'm 22, and you know finally realized my dream of being a citizen. Now I can, when I get older, I can tell my kids, you know, I came here as an immigrant and now I'm a citizen and I can provide a better life, better opportunity for them. Um, it's great to see similar, familiar faces. Um, my mom was here too, her friends, family came. My family members are here too and it just makes it more, more humble, more humbling experience. When I moved to the United States, I moved to Kingston. I've been living here pretty much almost my whole life. And I'm going, I'm doing grad school right now in Binghamton, different part of New York, and I always tell that I'm, I'm from Ulster, I'm from Kingston, that's where I come from, and I'm very proud to be from here. Uh, currently, I'm doing a master's in accounting. Uh, I just started my first year in grad school, and hopefully after two years, I can finish my degree and become a certified public accountant. Oh, I feel really, really happy and excited, and I want to say thank you, God, because give me the good opportunity to come to this country, and I so really say thank you, God, for helping me every single day. When we come back, we'll take a look at some of the headlines making news in the county. Stay with us.